right, so we are starting off in this case with part two of our lesson for domain and range, part two. So we do have a worksheet in this case. We are going to be working on four problems, trying to identify in this case what type of domain we have and the interval. Um, so a few things in this case, we are going to be working with integers and real numbers. So whenever we're talking about integers in this case, we're actually talking about uh, positive whole numbers in this case. Integers would actually be positive whole numbers. And we also have um, real numbers, where in this case, real numbers uh, would be, in this case, any negative, any positive, any whole number, any fraction, right? So in this case, whole numbers would be counting numbers, one, two, three, four, and so on. Real numbers would be anything. Anything that's valid with real numbers. So um, let's go ahead and actually take a look at something else. So this is uh, two of the world cups. The other two in this case um, talk about the types of quantities we have. So the first one talks about having a discrete quantity, which in this case talks about um, a value in this case that you could count, which in this case would be considered an integer. Um, so an integer could be described as a discrete quantity because in this case, you're basically counting whole numbers or, um, yeah, just, just basically whole numbers in this case. Uh, continuous quantities in this case is an infinite number of possible values. So it could be anything. It could be a fraction. It could be a decimal. It's basically a real number. So a real number would be described as something that's continuous. And integer would, in this case, be described as something that's continuous. So um, make sure you guys write these down. So let's go ahead and take a look in this case at our first example. In the first example, in this case, we actually are given the following. It says that we have Alice who is studying um, the relationship between chiral climate and heart disease, right? Um, it says that H of T for us in this case is being uh, modeled. H of T is modeled by the probability of occurrence in a heart disease um, at an area where temperature is T. So in this case, they are giving us... Um, our units of measure in this case are giving us the probability of heart disease and they're giving us the temperature. Now, out of these two, I do want to go ahead and uh, first focus once again, um, which one's X, which one's Y. In this case, um, our smallest amount, which is degrees, is going to be representing the X value. It's going to be X. And in this case, um, the type of or the probability of occurrences would actually be Y. So H of T in this case is Y, um, degrees Celsius is X. Now it says, according to Alice's model, when the temperature is negative 5 degrees Celsius, um, it says that there's a 10% of probability that um, the occurrence happens in this case. Um, so and then it says the probability decreases when the temperature reaches 30 degrees. So then Alice, in this case, with her research, is concluding that um, when it's colder, there's an increase in heart disease. And then when it gets warmer, in this case, um, the probability decreases in this case. So um, we actually want to go ahead and talk about our types of domain. Now, when we're talking about domain, we're actually talking about the X value. Domain is X value. So in this case, because we are talking about the X value, then we have to talk about the degree Celsius. So in this case, we have to talk about T being the degree Celsius. And we have to, in this case, um, interpret degrees. I got an S. Uh, interpret, in this case, uh, how we can read the degrees, whether we could read it as a whole number, whether we could read it as a, as, um, a decimal in this case. Um, so in this case, T is representing the degrees, so we want to go ahead and identify the domain. Now, in this case, they are giving us negative 5 degrees Celsius, and they're also giving us 30. Now, in this case, um, we're not actually going to be measuring um, decimals of our uh, degrees in this case. It's just going to be whole numbers, right? So both of these are actually whole numbers. Real numbers are whole numbers, and integers are whole numbers. But if we take a look in this case at the negative 5 degrees Celsius, um, negative in this case wouldn't be uh, part of the integers. It would actually be part of the real numbers. So because our interval in this case or our degrees starts off with the negative, it is going to be real numbers. Now, I want to go ahead and uh, determine what the appropriate domain is. And in this case, we do have to write our interval based on the information that's circled in blue. 
So in this case, it says that the lowest our um, degrees could go is negative 5 degrees. So that's negative 5. And that has to be less than or equal to T, where in this case it represents the temperature. And the highest it's going to go is 30. So in this case, that would actually be the interval and the type of domain we're working with. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Next one in this case, it says Mia is rolling a pair of dice, right? A pair meaning she has two. It says P of N models the probability of the event that the sum of the dice is N. It says which number type is more appropriate for the domain of P? So in this case, once again, P of N is a probability equals probability. And n in this case equals the sum of dice, right? Now, in this case, we're actually uh, considering the dice. And whenever you're rolling it, um, we're actually going to be talking about this part here. Whenever we're rolling the dice, we're not going to be getting half of the dice. It's not like if I roll it and then I have my dice, in this case, midair, you know, about to fall. But it stays there. It's not going to stay there. It actually has to land to the ground it has to be flat in the surface in order for it to be considered a full roll so in this case um because we can't consider the roll to be half or to be um you know a fraction of something it has to be a full spin a full roll um we're actually going to go ahead and consider this to be an integer um in this case um it could also probably be a real number but in this case if i were to say can it be negative? Can I go backwards? In this case, that wouldn't be it. So um, the dice in this case would actually be considered an integer. The roll in this case of the dice would be an integer. All right. Um, let me actually just move this. My beautiful drawing here. Let's move it down. Um, so in this case, I actually want to go ahead and talk about the domain. Since the domain in this case is being represented by n, in this case, we want to go ahead and see the sum of the dice. Now, if we have a pair of dice, that means we have two dice. And let's say this, the probability of us getting the smallest one um, on each of the dice is a one. So if we add both of those, our smallest amount would actually be two. So two in this case is less than or equal to n, less than or equal to the largest amount we could, pro the largest possibility we could get in terms of the sum. So largest on both of them is going to be 6. So if we add them, that's 12. So our domain in this case talks about uh, the sum in this case. The smallest is 2. The largest is 12. So that would actually be our um, type of number that we have. It's going to be an integer because we need to do a full roll. And then in this case, the domain. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Next one in this is it says that Pooja um she bought um she bought a plant in this case, right? And that plant started to sprout two days before she actually bought it. So before she even considered buying it, the the, the plant in this case was already um sprouting. So uh from there she after she bought it, she had it for 90, 98 days uh before it died, right? At its tallest, the plant was 30 centimeters tall so h of t models the height height in this case would actually be uh, h of t which is y and in this case t days is x so this one's x which is what we're going to go ahead and talk about in the domain now in this case it says which type of which type of number or which number type is more appropriate for the domain now in this case because we are talking about days um she actually bought the plant or the plant actually began to sprout two days before she bought it. So if Pooja in this case, uh, if, if she bought it in this case, it should be um, negative two because we're not counting the day she actually, um, it began to sprout before she actually bought it. So it's negative two, right? Now we're already seeing that this here is going to be a negative once again, because um, it began to sprout two days before she bought it. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and consider this to be um, not an integer, sorry, a real number. This is going to be a real number um, because once again, it's going to be sprouting by the day, which is a whole number. But because it began to sprout two days before she bought it, it's negative. So it's going to be a real number here. 
Now, if we're going to go ahead and represent the domain, we want to go ahead and consider the day she had it. She had it two days or began to sprout two days before. And in this case, um, she had 98 with this days with it after that. So in this case, our domain for this would actually be once again starting at negative 2. And then that has to be less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 98. So this is actually the amount of days the, the plant was actually alive. Uh, negative 2, which is the day she didn't have it, and then 98 days after she bought it. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. Next one, in this case, it says HFT models the leading uh, number of home runs from four season. Um, y in this case of the National League between the years 2000 to 2010. So in this case, we're given a table in this case. Once again, this is the seasons. Talking about the players in this case, the amount of home runs. Um, so let's go ahead and see here, first of all. So Y in this case um, is actually talking about the season. So this is technically, it's our domain. X in this case is a domain because they're telling us that H of Y is the home run. So in this case, the Y value is the home runs. Home runs. So in this case, Y is actually being used to represent um, the years in this case or the seasons, right? Years or seasons. So we're actually going to be comparing this section, the one about the season. So we're going to go ahead and be comparing this section here. All right. Now, in this case, uh, we're actually taking a look at the year. It says a year round in this case or a full year or full season. Um, the table in this case isn't really showing us values like mid-season, you know, in between. It's just going, you know, from the, the year 2000, 2001, 2002, all the way to 2010. So in this case, because our years here are, are whole in this case, and we were not really counting backwards. We're just counting between two separate intervals in this case. Our answer for this one is going to be integers. Now, in terms of the domain here, um, we actually have to, to consider uh, the seasons in this case, right? In total, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 seasons, right? Two, let's do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yes. We have a total of 11 seasons. Now, although we have 11 seasons in this case, I'm not going to say that we start off with between 1 and 11. We're actually talking about the year, the season it was. So our appropriate domain for this one would actually have to be um, the year it started, which is the year 2000. And in this case, this would be, um, let's say, Y is less than or equal to the year it ended, which is 2010. So that would actually be our, our interval. That would be our interval here. And the type of number we're looking at.